Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Well, this is my last fall video for 2023, and we are moving on to Christmas. I cannot wait, and as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. In this project, I'm using two crates from the Dollar Tree, and I'm showing you that I got different ones in different sizes. Now, you can use them vertically or horizontally. It's totally up to you, but because one was shorter than the other, I decided to go ahead and use them both vertically. I'm just taking some hot glue. This is Gorilla Hot Glue on the low setting, and I'm gonna glue these two crates together. Next, I'm using the color in Pumpkin from Apple Barrel Paint, and I'm gonna give one crate a coat with the pumpkin color and the next crate I'm going to go ahead and use apple barrel paint again in the color antique parchment and I'm going to give one coat here as well now I'm see that paint right there where it's gathering in between the crates I just take a kitchen knife and go through to remove that after that I take antique parchment and I do some dry brushing on my bigger orange crate pumpkin and then I did a dry brushing here with like a soft sherbet type orange which I did not care for at all so I'm just showing you why it's a different color and I'm repainting it again with the antique parchment to start again. This time I decided to take the color burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint and give the cream one a dry brush. Well, it's not quite a dry brush, it's kind of just a distressing thing. And I use a baby wipe to wipe off if I give, you know, put too much down and I paint the bottom a solid dark color. I do the same thing on the orange one. I just don't go as heavy, but in order to make them match a little bit better and come together, I went ahead and used burnt umber on this one and I also paint the bottom the dark color, a solid color to it. I don't know, I don't know why I did that. I just thought it looked more finished. This is the assortment uh, Rip and I came up with to make a messy bow for these pumpkins. I do have a full tutorial on how to make bows. You can find it down in my description box. All of that ribbon was from the Dollar Tree except for the thicker twine one. I got that from Teemu, I think for $2 or under, it was very cheap. I remember thinking it was comparable to the Dollar Tree, maybe even a little cheaper per yard. And then I'm just using some hot glue. Now, the reason I didn't show you me cutting these little branches on top that I use for stems in half is because I do end up actually tearing them off and replacing them with taller ones. So for now we're just focusing on the bow and I take and strategically glue that to cover up the holes on the top pumpkin so you can't see that because that taller crate did have some little holes on the top like handles. And then I'm using these tiny pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I'm just cutting off the stick. These are gonna be glued in the center like this or some extra embellishment. I thought that looked so cute. And now I'm taking some leftover leaves from the fall florals again. I've talked about that previously. And we're gonna do that for the pumpkin little leaf, I guess, just to give some greenery. And here I go. <laughs> this is when I rip off the stem because I thought, Holly, that's just not working. <laughs> so we take the taller stem. I'm definitely going to do my bows first, I think, and try to, well, try to plan ahead how tall they're going to be because once you start stacking up the embellishment, your stem can disappear. So I tore that off. Here's some leftover metal ribbon and I cut it right down the center. And this is a great, great trick. It came up so cute and totally went with the rustic theme of these crepe pumpkins. I'm taking a paintbrush and just spinning it around the paintbrush. And I chose a paintbrush because it gets gradually thinner at the top. So it makes more, it makes that little metal ribbon look more legit because I'm going to turn that into one of those little curly cube things that come out of the pumpkins. See right there and I glue those down and they are so cute. I really think that makes these DIY crate pumpkins that much more special. And that's it, and I love the way these came out.
For this project, I'm using a Dollar Tree pool noodle and a utility knife, and I'm just gonna cut all the way around the pool noodle. Next, I'm using a paper bag and cutting it in strips, although if I had to do this craft again, I would actually recommend the brown paper you can buy. It's much softer and more pliable and easier to work with your hands. But if you do use a paper bag, definitely crumble it up like you see me doing here to kind of make it more pliable and workable and softer. So I folded the ends in, as you can see there, that's kind of a way that you tuck it in so that they don't pop out when you roll these. And you're just gonna roll them around and around and make lots of, I guess twirls with this paper. This is something I saw on Pinterest and I did see a couple crafters do different versions using, uh, well, paper bags, they did it with a pumpkin form. They didn't, the little wreath form, they didn't do it this way. But I thought that this would be fun because it's similar to like the toilet roll pumpkins that I made two years ago, but you're using a pool noodle. I, th I looked at it and I thought that kind of looks like a, you know, you know, the inside of a toilet roll when you're done using the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> why not we'll use it for a pumpkin so you just go around this pool noodle and I do have my glue gun set on low heat because the pool noodle will melt if you use high heat glue although I think if you keep holding it there it does finally bond and cool down so sometimes you can get it to work especially if you're working with bulky material and then I decide this guy needs a platform he definitely cannot stand up on his own when you're done with this so I took one of the little squares from Dollar Tree and some wooden beads and I'm kind of making this more of a primitive looking rustic craft I guess I want it to look really old and simple very simple so I'm using some of the Spanish moths I first put it on top and kind of crunched it down so it took shape and then I'm just going to use one of the wooden sticks that I got from Amazon the link is down below in my description box I'm using that for the stem and then I'm also going to put some Spanish moss around the bottom of the stand I wish I had round circles they were sold out at Walmart I can't find them at my Dollar Trees. I don't know if they make the really thin round circles. If they don't, they should. That would be a great seller, but, cause I think this would have been cuter on a little round circle platform, but I try to take the Spanish moss around the bottom here just to soften the look of the square. It still comes up cute. I mean, you just make it work. You know, I make it take a rounder shape with the Spanish moss, but it would have been nicer to have the round shape to begin with, but it came up totally cute either way. So I'm just putting the moss around the front and I'm gonna turn it around the back and do the same thing. Next, we're using the good old leaf from the Dollar Tree Floral Picks. I used to throw these away years ago, but they are really good for crafting. They're great pumpkin leaves, obviously. But a lot of times when you use their florals, you actually have too much bulk if you leave the leaves on. So when you take them off, keep them. I mean, you can also use them to make, well, I'm not gonna say because I might do it for Christmas. But I'm taking some of this ticking stripe material here that I had left over. It was a scrap and I decided to keep it so that I could cut thin strips and make little ticking stripe ribbon for when I want to make a primitive type looking craft. This was the perfect opportunity for that. So I just glued the bow onto the top. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little raffia. I love adding raffia almost to all of my pumpkins because it's really the only time that I really use raffia in a big way maybe a little bit in Easter, but I use it in a huge way during fall. I just think it gives a great feel of like hay and pumpkin patches. It just kind of gives the whole ambiance. So I put that on the top and then you're gonna see me trim off the longer little um, pieces right there. And I do them kind of unevenly so it looks nicer. And we're pretty much done. And I think this came up very cute.
For this project, we're using two of the Dollar Tree signs and the paint sticks that I get from Amazon that don't have the little uneven top there. And they just happen to fit perfectly. You don't need to cut them for these two signs. So that's really awesome because you can make some really <laughs> neat things without any, you know, a lot of hard work. So I'm using two of these to make them a little bit thicker because I'm using two signs and I'm just using the Gorilla Hot Glue to glue them together. Next, I'm gonna take white paint it's just white acrylic paint from Apple Barrel, and I'm going to give this one coat. We're going to give this a quick blow dry for the next thing. And then I just grabbed two pumpkin shapes that I needed. So you can grab any pumpkin shape, that's my point. You can even cut one out from cardboard by tracing it off of your computer screen. You can go directly to your computer screen or, or you can print it up. If you do trace from your computer screen, you should use a soft tip marker. I usually do, it's like a washable kids one, so in case it bleeds through and gets on the computer screen, you could just wipe it off. But that's a really neat, easy way to get a printable without the hassle of having to buy ink or get a printer. But I'm gonna go ahead and trace one big pumpkin, one little pumpkin, and then I'm using Apple Barrel paint in the color pumpkin, the orange color, to paint my first pumpkin. And then my second pumpkin, I'm going to paint it a softer orange. It's almost like a sherbet color from also Apple Barrel paint. And this is a Pinterest inspired craft. I tried to find out who did it. I actually tried to find it again. I took a screenshot of it on my phone and I don't know where I found it. I don't know who did it. So if you're watching, I want to say, I want to say it was for sale on Etsy. So I'm not sure if it is something you can find easily on Pinterest. But anyway, I add a little bit of the pumpkin orange in with the lighter orange just because I want it to have a little bit of dimension. I didn't like quite how light it was, but I will tell you guys, I am not a painter like everything I do, I would define as abstract. I have to do abstract <laughs> because, because I can't paint. And I really struggle with the lines on the pumpkin getting a nice curvature. But my point is, is I'm, if I can do it, anybody can. That's why I put it up on the video today. So you can see that even somebody with no painting skills can make, when it's all done, you'll see how cute it is because sometimes the abstract little painting you, know, you can actually find those a lot of times at Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby and they're a lot of money and I think oh I could do that because it's not perfect and it's the imperfection that makes it so cute so I'm just doing some of the nutmeg brown for the stem that was nutmeg brown nutmeg brown for the stem and also for the little grooves in the pumpkin and then I'm gonna take this knife now this is a trick that I do on my crafts and I thought why not let's do it on the painting you just use a craft knife and you just scrape up lines like this and it makes it look so 3d and realistic so it worked it looks great in fact I think my stems are probably the best part of this painting <laughs> but I also end up using that knife to scrape a little bit of those brown lines the grooves on the pumpkin as well you'll see that in a minute to remove some of the paint here I go right there it removes some of the paint and helps create a nicer curvature that's another thing you can fix it. You can paint over it or you can scrape some of it away. It gives the painting a little bit of texture because you know it is on a kind of rustic looking piece of wood. So this doesn't have to be perfect. It's a fall craft that though you get away with rustic for sure. Even if that's not your normal decor, you get away with it. So I'm just kind of fixing my lines a little bit and then I go in with some more orange paint and paint over that. And you just have to keep playing with it until you get it to be where you're comfortable with it, you're happy. And of course, if you know how to paint, you'll be really happy. <laughs> I do like when I scrape though, it actually gives it a different color when I go through with the orange, it gives it more dimension. So next, I do remember, you know, I'm going from a photo right now and it has the little curly cubes on the top. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I don't feel mm, like a good enough painter to do this kind of thing with the thin brush. I mean, I could have if I had practiced for a while, but I'm using a furniture market marker from the Dollar Tree in the color walnut to do this and it looks just fine it matches close enough so that's what I do and then I'm adding another little curly cube here at the top there because that's a bigger pumpkin I'm trying to copy what I'm seeing on the photo there but <laughs> it's hard it's hard 
but I, I'm content at this point with what it looks like and I'm just erasing my pencil lines. By the way, I did draw everything with pencil first so that in case I made a mistake, you know, I could erase. And I'm using the point here to scrape away just the tip of these little curly things to make them look a little thinner and more delicate, I guess, going up instead of a thick marker line. Now, I didn't show you this part. These are the Dollar Tree leaves right here, the burlap ones. I originally was going to glue three of them on there because I thought oh, that'll be nice, but it just didn't look right. It looked kind of gaudy. So I do end up taking some burnt umber and adding a little bit of distressing to each leaf, but you'll see at the end, I only end up keeping the orange leaf and the bow that I made. So that's Dollar Tree ribbon with the hula skirt there. I just made a bow, a simple bow out of the ribbon and a simple bow out of the hula skirt and I glued it on top of the ribbon and that was it. You will definitely have to let me know if I should have kept the green leaf on. I did end up definitely taking the burgundy one off and I ended up taking the green one off. I just went for a very simple look. I would love your feedback because I can always add, but I just tie a little hanger on and we're all done. For this next project, I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree rounds. They're already pre-made. They're fairly new. I think they've been out a year or so, but they're so cute. They have the little wooden beads on the top and like a shiplap in the middle. And I'm just using antique wax and a baby wipe and I'm staining it. Now this one worked really well because the actual frame was smooth. I usually talk about the antique wax kind of catching on the wood. If the wood is really smooth, you can tell by rubbing your finger over it. If the wood feels like it's really slippery, then the antique wax on a baby wipe is going to work perfectly. Still using that wet wipe, I take and give it a little bit of a whitewash using a little bit of acrylic paint. I just barely put any on the tip of the wipe, but I felt like if I used a wipe, I had more control. If I dry brushed, I knew that I was gonna hit the edges of the frame that I had just stained, and it did end up working out really well. In my first fall DIY video, I had used a decal that said gather, and it also came with home. And now I'm gonna use the home one. Someone actually asked me, aren't those rub-on transfers? And I thought, oh no, were they? I don't think so, they were sticky. So anyway, they're definitely not rub-on transfers, they're decals, really super sticky decals. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the word home off here and put it on the sign. Next, I took one of these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins and using a kitchen knife, I'm gonna cut it in half. You've probably seen this DIY before. I just don't have one and I wanted to make one because I've always wanted one. I think it's so cute. You cut a pumpkin in half and then you kind of take out the middle of it a little bit and carve it out and use it like a vase. I'm going to use a utility knife and I'm not gonna carve the whole center out or take too much out. I'm just gonna take a little bit out so that I don't have a lot of bulk there, but I am definitely going to stick some of my florals inside the foam. And it was actually fun taking it apart because I discovered that centerpiece, that thing that looks like the bottom stem of the pumpkin is basically just a skewer stick that they shove up there. It's really interesting <laughs> when you take these apart because you realize how they're made. And then using a little bit of hot glue, I'm, I have it on a low setting here so it's not melting the foam. I'm going to glue it on the very bottom of that plaque so that I have some room up above to put my florals in. These are all Dollar Tree florals too. It looks like boxwood, but I don't know if it is boxwood, but it was part of a pick with a little pumpkin on and something that looked like a little bit of wheat. I'm not sure, but I tried to pick all my florals in super warm colors, yellows, oranges, wine colors, just the colors of fall. And then this pumpkin looked a little too plastic and cheap. So I took the baby wipe again, dipping it in a little bit more of the antique wax. And I use folk art antique wax, but any antique wax works for this. And I'm just kind of putting a little bit on my pumpkin just to kind of distress it and just make it have some dimension. It was very flat and very one dimensional. And I think it looks a little bit more expensive when you change that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
When I stood back and looked at this, I realized the final touch for fall is sunflowers because they're really on trend right now, but I think it came up so cute. These last two DIYs coming up were featured in a summer video and I put them in this video at the end because I didn't want you to miss them because they are fall DIYs. If you've already seen them, you can just fast forward through the video to the end. And again, thank you for watching. This next one was a lot of fun. I have been seeing the wine glass little vinyl placemats, it seems like forever since I've been shopping at the Dollar Tree. And I thought, you know, what can I do with this? These are Kind of, it's difficult to craft with those. I had a couple ideas. I was going to make a wine box at some point to like store your wine bottles in on your counter, but what I ended up deciding I thought would be cute is to do a pumpkin. These are total fall colors. They're warm, they're burgundies and browns and orange and gold, and I want to make a pumpkin for my kitchen. And I thought, well, how neat. This is kind of tying in like a kitchen theme because it's got the wine glasses and you know it looks like a kitchen type uh, placemat and it's going to be for fall. So I went ahead and did a pumpkin. I, I freehanded it. I had a really hard time getting the other side even. So as you saw, I cut out half the pumpkin. Then I took a piece of computer paper, put it down, traced it, that half, on the paper. And then I got a nice even, you know, I just put it on the other side and traced the piece of paper. <laughs> and then I got a more symmetrical pumpkin. Look how cute that is, though. I was so pleased with this one. I really wasn't sure how it was going to come out. And I thought, well, you perfect little kitchen pumpkin you when I was all done. That's perfect. So I'm using cardboard. You guys love when I do my cardboard crafts. So I thought I would throw it in here. I am using two of them because this cardboard, it was really clean and nice. It was on the inside of a package, but it was a little thinner. So I went ahead and used two of them and I'm just gonna glue those two pieces of cardboard together to create it, you know, make it more sturdy. And there I go. So we glue those two together and then we're gonna glue the vinyl placemat on top. So I've talked about this in previous videos. When you work with cardboard, at least with, for me, it will just look cheap and nasty if you don't cover the sides. You have to cover the sides. It's mandatory, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the craft to look really nice in your home. If you don't care, it's okay too, but this is just my thing. I have to cover it. So this decorative twine that you can find at the Dollar Tree was perfect for this. I went ahead and I covered the entire pumpkin with this decorative twine ribbon. Here's some pretty fall ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's perfect for autumn. And all of that ribbon is from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm making something called a messy bow here. If you wanna see the full tutorial, I do have a bow video. It's linked down below in my description box. It's time stamped, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. You can just look for the bow that you're looking for, click it, you know, it's in the top pinned comment there. You can just click the time and it will take you straight to that part of the video. And you can look for messy bow. So what is an autumn craft without raffia? So I'm just taking a little bit of the raffia. I got this raffia on Amazon. It's really nice. If you can find them, you can also use the hula skirts from the Dollar Tree, but I'm just making a little raffia bow there. I'm gonna trim it up kind of haphazardly there so it looks nice and rustic, which I love, especially during fall. And that's it. We are gonna put a hanger on the back of this. I kind of regretted that I did that because I think I am gonna to want to put it in one of those plate holders instead and put it on my kitchen counter. So I might take the hanger off, 
But if you want to hang it up, what I did is I took some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope, I went ahead and hot glued it on the back, and then I used some duct tape to cover that while the glue was still hot so it would all kind of meld together. I usually use masking tape for this, but they don't have the wide masking tape right now at Dollar Tree, and I do like the tape to be wide. So duct tape works just fine too. It's just to reinforce it so it's not just relying on the hot glue, and I've never had trouble with this falling off. You could even put it outside. It works really, really well. And I'm just trimming the edges there to round it out so that the tape you know you don't see it on the edge and we're all done Maybe it's just me, but that saying right there, friends and family gather here to me is definitely an autumn type sign. It's an autumn type saying. So I thought I just made a pumpkin. So I cut the board and I actually cut on the other side a little bit of two. You can see it on the left hand side, I kind of made it a little bit rough too on the edge because I wanted it to match. I didn't catch that on film. Sorry about that. Or I did and I didn't put it in here I caught it on film but I didn't put it in this video and all I'm doing now is just trimming this little mat down to fit this sign I love ticking stripe that's what we have on the edge there and I thought I don't know exactly where I'm going to do with that ticking stripe but I'm going to cut it and keep it we're going to get it on this sign and I decided to put it on the ends just like that in the end there and I think it complemented it so much and kept that whole country look because ticking stripe is so country it's so farmy farmy is that a word I don't know but it's just so perfect again for fall or if you do farmhouse decor it's perfect so I'm taking a little bit of the white paint again we're gonna dry brush this that's the only thing about these signs is they are very stock I guess I mean they don't do anything with them they're a blank slate for you and I like to usually dry brush them a little bit because otherwise they don't look as much like real wood now I'm taking a glue stick again this extra strength glue stick worked like a charm it held these vinyl mats I wasn't sure whether or not it was going to because vinyl is really slippery but it held them beautifully so that is an option I cannot vouch for a regular glue stick I have a feeling it would work but you'd have to be very generous but the extra strength extra strength one from Walmart definitely works and I think it runs about five dollars for a large one so I'm just putting that down and I'm gonna go ahead and put the ticking stripe on either side So now I'm using a black furniture marker. You find them in a set of three at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going around the edge of that placemat a little bit. And I'm not keeping the line totally straight. I want it to look a little bit rustic and, you know, distressed, I guess, and antiqued. And the final step to make this come together so that it is cohesive is to put a little bit of dry brushing on the top of the vinyl mat. And I think this sign came out so nice. It is perfect for an entry table, a console table, or a shelf. I love you all so much. Happy fall, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, comment, like, and share. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.